Spine researcher Stuart McGill several years ago came up with a five-step process for helping to rehabilitate flexion intolerant discogenic back pain. The first step in that is to identify poor movement patterns and correct them. Uh, the second after that is to improve stability in the lumbar spine and then we improve the endurance of the muscles that allow you to improve that stability in the spine. Then there's a strength building process and then followed by improvements in power and agility uh, in the lumbar spine for those people that are looking for it. So let's go to the first step and talk about that now. Poor movement strategies. The best way that we can describe that or the simplest way I've come up with explaining this over the years is that this curve right here has been lost too frequently or for too long of a period of time with people that are sitting or bending over and picking things up with poor form. Possibly the simplest way of explaining this is that you've developed a hinge right here inappropriately. This curve should not be lost for, for, for prolonged periods of time and should not be lost under a load. Instead, right down here in the hip joint is a big ball and socket joint that is better designed for that hinging movement. So let's take a look at what it means to hinge from this particular point in, this, in the body instead of up here in the low back. Take a look at this model of the human spine. As you see this series of curves in the spine, this is as if you were facing in this direction. This is the curve in the low back right here. And when people tend to hinge from this point repetitively, it essentially creates a repetitive stress injury of the discs in the lower part of the body, or in the lower part of the back. Here you can see that demonstrated as a bit of a, a red spot right here. As that disc starts to thin and weaken on the back part of the disc, if, if you bend forward and lose the curve in your low back, it will press backwards. Why is that important? Because backwards, behind the disc, is the spinal cord and the nerve roots that make up the nerves that go down the back of your leg. That's why you'll have pain in the, low, in the buttock and in the back of the thigh and maybe even down to your foot in some, uh, for some of you when you bend forwards or when you sit for prolonged periods of time in a slumped posture. Here I have a volunteer standing on a uh, balanced disc full of air that we'll oftentimes use in rehab in the clinic. And when you're, when you're maintaining the curve in this part of your back, the forces across that disc are displaced relatively evenly across it. Kind of like the way he's standing here in the middle of this disc. You can easily see that the air is pushing out evenly around that container. However, when you lose the curve in your spine, it shifts the weight of your body forward onto the front of the vertebra here and pinches the front of the disc, much like him moving forwards and standing on the front of this disc. Now, you can imagine that in this disc now, the air pressure is push, pushing greatest backwards, causing that uh, force to push back and strain the back of this particular disc right here. Now, if that happens repetitively here in your spine, then over time it will weaken that disc and cause it to bulge backwards into your spinal cord and possibly into the nerve roots that go down the leg and that's the origin of the, of the pain in the back of the leg and into the buttock. So now you can see a little bit more about how the um, poor posture choices, the bending forwards with a rounded low back or sitting with a slumped position like this can cause negative effects on the disc. Now, the problem is the muscles in your low back right here, the ones that hurt all of the time, they're smarter than you. The, those muscles feel that you are about to injure yourself severely by slumping, and they shorten and tighten to try to improve the curve in your low back and pull it back into place. That continued tightness in the muscles over time makes them stiff and makes them painful. The problem is, and this may be one of the most important things you're going to hear on, on any of these videos, the problem is people will oftentimes put their hands on these muscles 
and feel them and say, wow, that's really, really sore. That must be my back pain. And a very, very common normal response to a person feeling a short, tight muscle to make it feel better is to stretch it. How would a person stretch these muscles in the low back? Oftentimes, they would bend forwards and in the process, they would round their back. And even though it feels kind of good to the muscles at that time, it keeps the process in place because that informs your body that you are about to injure yourself. And once again, those muscles will start to tighten again. Now, keep an eye out below for some links to other videos that will also explain why you shouldn't be stretching your hamstrings as well.